Do you remember Johnny Philip Morris? Johnny Philip Morris was the famous spokesperson for the Philip Morris cigarette brand for over 40 years. Welcome to Eric C Productions. If this is your first time watching one of my videos, please take a moment to hit that subscribe button. Did you do it? If you did, thanks. If you didn't, well, I guess I'm going to have to earn your subscription. Hit that notification bell so that you can get notified of my latest video that are posted daily. Thanks for watching and now back to the program. Come on out, everybody's waiting for you. Lucy, I got something for you. It's a Philip Morris. good to me. Well, honey, you deserve the best. And you deserve the best, too. So... The year was 1933. Advertising exec Milton Bayow, the principal of Bayow Agency in New York City, was managing the advertising account of Philip Morris Cigarettes. Bayow had an idea to bring new life, literally, to the mature bellboy with the tray of cigarettes campaign. He had heard of the distinctive voice and appearance of John Roventini. Johnny Roventini was a dwarf. Not a very politically correct name to call someone of his stature by today's standards. As an adult, he was only 47 inches tall and weighed 59 pounds. Roventini was employed as a bellboy in the New Yorker Hotel in New York City. He was promoted by the hotel as the smallest bellboy in the world. In the early days, lobbies were used as meeting places, so situations with people seeking each other out was not uncommon. Bio and Lyons had apparently been unnoticed by the 22-year-old bellboy when, according to legend, Bio approached him and paid Johnny a dollar to page Mr. Philip Morris through the lobby. The small bellboy repeatedly cried out, call for Philip Morris, in his distinctive high-pitched voice several times, not knowing that there was no such person. He did not realize that he had been essentially performing an audition. I went around the lobby yelling my head off, Johnny later recalled, but Philip Morris didn't answer my call. Roventini initially thought that his call had been both legitimate and unsuccessful. He was soon learned that he had been wrong on both accounts. He was later quoted in Variety, I had no idea that Philip Morris was a cigarette. Bayow and Lyons both visualized the performance of the small bellboy as ideal to bring life to their fictitious character. In April 1933, Roventini was hired to make a call for Philip Morris on different radio programs sponsored by the tobacco company. Roventini had been earning $15 a week at the hotel, about $300 today, and received $100, about $1,980 today, for his very first radio commercial. He later recounted that he only accepted the new job after checking with his mother, with whom he lived much of his life. Roventini resembled a child in stature, later gaining him and Philip Morris popularity among children and adults alike. Throughout his career as a spokesman, Little Johnny made appearances at countless events, ranging from supermarket grand openings to public school fairs. He booked so many events in his first year touring that Philip Morris was forced to hire more actors to play the part of Johnny. There are rumored to have been at least 10 Johnny Juniors who helped facilitate Johnny's public appearances. However, Philip Morris kept quiet about these actors, preferring everyone to believe there was only one Johnny. 
The most well-known Johnny Jr. was Albert Altieri, 1916 to 2002, a three foot seven inch bellhop. He was hired after Roventini at the age of 19 in 1935. Two of the other Johnny Juniors mentioned also included Leon Polinski, famous for being a munchkin in The Wizard of Oz, and Buddy Douglas, another uh, character actor in Hollywood films. Philip Morris provided a small chauffeur-driven American Austin convertible automobile to get Johnny to the live radio broadcasts on time. This is family footage of my mother and my uncle who posed with him in Salinas, California in 1950. Johnny was visiting my great-grandfather's grocery store called Wings Market. He became a friend to movie stars, sitting on popular actress Marlene Dietrich's lap in a publicity shot. He shared a dinner table with General and Mrs. Dwight D. Eisenhower. He clowned around with Red Skelton. He even sat ringside with boxer Jack Dempsey. He participated in numerous parades and other public events. He was earning $50,000 annually, a substantial wage for such work in those days, as it was about $987,000 in today's money. Roventini was heard on popular live radio programs and appeared in his short-jacketed bellboy outfit on some of the most watched television programs of the 1950s and the 1960s. A Philip Morris representative once described Johnny Roventini as a living trademark. Roventini made personal appearances for Philip Morris until he retired in 1974. Johnny's fame as an advertising legend was enhanced by his ever-present smile and outstretched hand that won him friends wherever he went. In retirement, he enjoyed sailing. He never married and died in a hospital near White Plains, New York in 1998 at the age of 88. Johnny Roventini's original uniform, the red usher's jacket, pipe trousers, black pillbox hat, and white gloves were donated to the American Advertising Museum, which was located in Portland, Oregon, and eventually closed in 2004. Hey, if you just watched my video, thanks for watching. Hit that like button and please subscribe to Eric C. Productions.